Hi YouTube, my name's Jeff and I'm the Vegel Guy. A few days ago, I shared this video on using a homemade pump and vacuum chamber during lost wax casting to get nice sharp castings. Since then, I've had a few emails from you asking how the pump was made. Well, as I explained in the vacuum chamber build video, I based my pump on the King of Randoms design but modifying as necessary for UK pipe and fittings. If you're on Grant's side of the pond, his pump should work well for you. But for those without access to all those wonderful US plumbing fittings, I'll quickly run through the build now. Between Grant's video and mine, you should then have no trouble making a similar pump, no matter where you are in the world. Now, this is a UK build, so I'll be talking in UK spec and sizes. To begin with, here's a parts list. Look for solvent weld type pipe and fittings. These tend to be much stronger than the standard PVC piping, so it should stand up to more punishment. I'm not going to give you specific lengths, customise yours to a comfortable working height for you. Essentially, you're looking to make two T's, one slightly smaller than the other. I found a 40 and 32 mm pipe and fittings worked perfectly for this. I couldn't find anything like the equal T that Grant used, the UK ones all seem to be offset. So to keep things fairly symmetrical either side of the main downpipe, I found I had to cut different size lengths for either side of the T. This was the same for the handle and the footrest. Grant manufactured his own non-return valves, but I thought I'd keep it easier by buying these 15mm check valves. The arrow shows the direction of the flow and you need to make sure you get that right. I glued up some square pieces of scrap plywood, drilled a hole through the centre, then spun these in my drill press. Using this special angle grinder blade, it was quick and easy to turn this square section into a cylinder shape. You could do this just as easily with a belt sander, or even with a block and sandpaper. The aim is to create two cylinders that can slide snugly inside the 40mm pipe. But it's also necessary to create a third cylinder that slides inside the 32mm pipe. Here you can see all three made from plywood, and the smaller cylinder needs its central hole filling to make it completely airtight. So I use a wooden plug and expanding wood glue for this. But it's worth noting this cylinder failed later on. So I made an identical one, but out of scraps of hardwood instead. So keep this in mind. Coming back to the two bigger cylinders, a large diameter hole is partly drilled into one end of each. This should be just large enough for the threaded section of the check valve to rest inside. Just make sure to fit the check valves correctly, one pointing in and one pointing out. If you get that wrong, your pump won't work. I took some more expanding wood glue and smeared this onto the thread of the valve, making sure it didn't clog the insides. Left for an hour, this bonds really well. Here you can see the two valves have been glued inside the 40mm pipes. The far right one has also had some car body filler added to it, for extra strength and to ensure it's airtight. The central pipe is the soon to be doomed 32mm pipe. The two valve pipes need to be glued into the through section of the 40mm T. It's worth taking time to sand and thoroughly clean all the pipe and fittings before using the appropriate solvent cement. The 40mm upright pipe can also be welded on at this point. Coming back to the 32mm pipe again, this will be the piston. And just like Grant, I wanted to fit some O-rings onto this. Again, just like him, I cut a couple of grooves using my table saw, roughly an inch apart. However, as our piping is nowhere near as thick as that used by our American cousins, we need the wooden cylinder inside. Otherwise, we'll just slice straight through the pipe. However, the 
plywood snapped easily, so I had to do the whole thing again using hardwood instead. You can see how the piston now slides inside the 40mm pipe with a bit of a push, but there's too much slack at this end. I believe Grant modified an end cap with his, but mine is a two-fold solution to match the parts that were available. The first part is a straight connection adapter that's welded onto the 40mm pipe. Then we take a 32mm reducer fitting which is designed to slide inside the 40mm straight connection. However, this has a lip inside to catch the 32mm piping, so this needs to be filed and smoothed away. This reducer can now slide along the 32mm pipe without any restriction. Assembly does take a little bit of thought. The greased piston is pushed inside the 40mm pipe trying not to strike the insides of the straight connection adapter. It's only pushed in a few inches, then the pipe behind it is greased a few inches at a time and slowly pushed in, but not all the way. When there's just a few inches of piping remaining sticking out, the insides of the connection adapter are carefully cleaned to remove any grease. Then the filed reducer is slid down the piston pipe and partially pushed home. At this point, solvent cement is carefully applied to the reducer. The idea is to bond the reducer to the connection fitting, but not to the piston pipe. This is pushed home and the excess glue is carefully wiped away. Then everything is left alone for a good hour to make sure that everything is properly bonded. At this point, the 32mm T can be cemented to the top of the piston, forming the handles. And this completes the pump. It really is that simple. It should now work perfectly and can pump both air and water. The advantage of using these check valves is that they have a standard thread fitting, which means they can easily be connected to any other standard plumbing fittings. Here I've attached a bob hose fitting. And that pretty much concludes this simple PVC pump. It is remarkably good and capable of achieving a fair amount of suction, as witnessed when using my homemade vacuum chamber. But it can be used for a variety of purposes. It's light in weight, strong, sturdy, and it's cheap as chips to build. It's certainly worth keeping one in your shed. Whee! So that's the end of this video. I'm sorry it hasn't been my usual blow by blow style, but I never really planned to make this video. I was just lucky enough to have some clips left over from my vacuum chamber build. So if you've got any questions, just drop me a line, or look at the more impressive video by Grant Thompson, the King of Random. So that's it for now guys, take care, and thanks for watching.